All right, folks, this is Roland Martin Unfiltered. Coming up on Wednesday, February 20th, 2019, Jesse Smollett is now a suspect in Chicago for filing a false police report. Uh, that is breaking news. We will give you the details uh, as we know them right now. Two new polls out of Virginia show there is more support for Governor Ralph Northam to stay in office with this blackface scandal. Then for the black lieutenant governor, Justin Fairfax, to stay after two women have accused him of sexual assault. We'll talk about this with Dr. Wes Bellamy, a prominent African-American Virginia politician. Uh, who has some thoughts on this. Cops seize millions of dollars in cash and property from people merely suspected of a crime. Well, today the Supreme Court had a decision that could very well end or curtail that. We'll talk with uh, our panelists about that, including two attorneys. Senator Bernie Sanders crushed the competition in his first day of fundraising for his bid to become president, but he still shows he doesn't understand black voters. We will explain. We've also got more crazy as white folks. School officials sent two brothers to detention for, for just smelling like weed. Y'all, not confirm is weed. We think you smell like weed. We'll talk to their mom. Plus, we got a video of a rich, entitled white Houston woman making a black one-year-old cry on her birthday. What in the hell is wrong with these people? And former President Barack Obama Tells, uh, talks to a group of men of color in Oakland as part of his, uh, of course, initiative when it comes to uh, MBK. Steph Curry was also there, and so we'll have the video for you as well. Folks, time to bring the funk. Roll the unfiltered. Let's go. He's got it. Whatever the miss, he's on it. Whatever it is, he's got the scoop, the fact, the find. And when it breaks, he's right on time. And it's rolling. Best believe he's knowing. All right, folks, breaking news out of Chicago. Chicago police now say that Empire actor Jesse Smollett is a suspect for filing a false report of him being beaten. Let's go to the tweet uh, that was sent out by uh, the spokesman for the Chicago Police Department. Case update, Jesse Smollett is now officially classified as a suspect in a criminal investigation by Chicago police for filing a false police report. A class four felony. Detectives are currently presenting evidence before a Cook County grand jury. What we also know is that Cook County State, State, State's Attorney Kim Fox has recused herself from this case, uh, and someone else is actually handling this. Now, you might recall it was a couple of weeks ago uh, that Smollett said that he was attacked around two o'clock in the morning. A noose was placed around his neck. Uh, he was beaten. Uh, homophobic and racial uh, slurs were hurled at him while uh, the folks who attacked him were also uh, saying this is MAGA country. Now, the case began to turn back and forth uh, over the last, really the last week. It was last Friday where Chicago police arrested two men, uh, two Nigerian men who returned from the country uh, who worked on set of Empire. The next day, they were released uh, from the police, and they said that the, the trajectory of the case changed based upon evidence they discovered in the apartment. Then we had all sort of sorts of comments coming from different sources within the police department. So this is really the first time uh, in uh, a week where the Chicago Police Department uh, has officially come out and made such a statement uh, when it comes to Jesse Smollett. Uh, of course, he also has not been interviewed in the last several days. His attorneys say that he will only be talking through them. Now, the other issue is this here. His attorneys also said that uh, he was being re-victimized by saying that he was a suspect. We'll wait to see what happens next from his lawyers. And here was the statement from Kim Fox after she recused herself. She issued this statement, out of an abundance of caution, 
The decision to recuse herself was made to address potential questions of impartiality based upon familiarity with potential witnesses in the case. Now, we don't necessarily know exactly who those witnesses are, but uh, that's what uh, the statement uh, from the Cook County State's Attorney. Let's, um, let's talk about this uh, with our panel. First and foremost, uh, joining us via Skype is Monique Presley, principal of the Presley Firm. Uh, so she joins us on the show as well. Also on the set, we have here uh, Scott Bolden, former chair, National Bar Association Political Action Committee. Also here, Robert Maxwell, Republican consultant and strategist. Monique, I'll start with you. Uh, it was all kind of stuff back and forth. We heard the initial report in terms of Smollett saying he was attacked. He go, goes out to L.A., has, a, has a, a concert where he said how he fought back uh, and defended himself. Then this <coughs> story just began to change and change and change. Now we're at the point where Chicago police are saying they clearly have enough evidence to say he's a suspect. What do you make of this announcement by Chicago police just a few moments ago? It was sketchy from the beginning and obviously for many reasons, I hate this. I hate everything about this story. Um, but it seems like at the point that Kim Fox, and you know, I know you know her, Roland, I know her too. She's a stand up, good person and prosecutor and she's close to a few people who would be involved with this. So to me, when she took her hands off of it, that wasn't necessarily a good sign for the trajectory of the way the case is going. Um, but the the police department has a job to do and so does her office. Uh, if it's true that this is something that was falsified, then we're dealing with a young man who was troubled. If it's the case that he's being framed and this wouldn't be the first time that that's happened, then it's a shame too. So. I really don't know what to say about it until we see more from whatever evidence it is they have. Scott Bolden, his attorney, said earlier this week that um, he was being re-victimized <clears throat> uh, because they were saying that he was behind this. Mm -hmm. You had different leaks coming out of Chicago, the police department, saying that uh, that he paid these men uh, to do this, that now we also have, do we have the video? Uh, they also released today surveillance video of the two Nigerian men mm -hmm. buying the items that were used in this alleged attack. Mm -hmm. And so what you see here is this is surveillance video uh, from WBBM uh, Channel 2 in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So what you see there is a red cap. You see the ski mask. Uh, you see the various items. And according to these men, uh, Sm Sm Smollett told them uh, to go buy these items. Now, you have the grand jury uh, with the filing of a f false police report. But before this took, this took place, or allegedly took place, then you had a letter that was mailed to the office with racist and homophobic slurs. Now if, to what office? The uh, Empire office. Mm -hmm. The FBI is investigating that mm -hmm. because that's now mail. Now, now by going through the mail system, mm -hmm. mail fraud. Mm -hmm. So he actually is now dealing with two arms of the law, mm -hmm. the feds and the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, being re-victimized is only re-victimization if you're telling the truth. I was in Chicago the weekend this was reported. In fact, as a former prosecutor, as I listened to the story, I said, hmm, this is strange, but let me see how it unfolds. Why? Because it was 2 a.m., it was 10 below zero, and by the way, you see those two guys, right? They're bodybuilders, right? If they jumped on this boy and wanted to beat him down, give him the beat down, he would have gotten more than a scratch, right? So the, the credibility of the representation uh, became very difficult. But watch this for you and your viewers. Usually, that video that you showed would be evidence that, in fact, these two individuals conspired to attack uh, uh, Smollett. But the video now is being used to charge uh, Smollett with a p possible crime of filing a false report. Whatever the two bodybuilders told the police, they corroborated it with the police. They told them that, that this was all a setup, right? And so then Smollett gets a lawyer, and then the police want to bring Smollett in to corroborate or to confront him right. with this evidence. And Smollett shuts down, he hires two lawyers, right? And so whatever he's afraid of, 
watched his defense attorneys or Smollett's attorneys, they're afraid to bring him in because they're not sure about their own client. And so this story is unraveling. It's a felony to file a false report. And the one thing you do with the police in Chicago or any other police, they don't like being lied to and they don't like being embarrassed. One of the things that, that jumps out here, uh, Robert, that you know, all these people who are saying uh, the media jumped to supporting his story. But if you actually look at what was done, Folks were reporting what he said happened. He then also went on Good Morning America <clears> to <throat> interview as well. The reporting continued. Chicago police were doing their investigation. Uh, and so it's not as if someone makes this type of allegation. Folks go, okay, we're not going to report this happens. Right. Here you have somebody who's a star, someone who is on a hit television show, makes this allegation, uh, files the report. That's going to get reported. Mm -hmm. The natural reaction, obviously, from people who are fans of his, who work with him, <clears throat> believing him, because who actually would think that somebody who is a star at this level would just make something up? Right. Now what you have, though, is, again, now you have the police saying, okay, no, we're going to chase all these leads down, and this totally flips uh, the story. Now he has to deal with, okay, will Fox back him up? Mm -hmm. What will happen with his record label? All those other things that, that, that are there, and now we also get into... If he did, why in the hell would you do it? Why? Well, I think, I don't know. I, I heard the word troublesome you used to describe Jesse uh, or Juicy. Uh, I think the word sinister or diabolical would be more appropriate. I think that this is something that was deeply planned and ingrained, and I think this was an idea he thought was good to create a narrative that I think that the public really wants to see. But here's and the piece. We still don't know. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Here's the deal. Yeah. We still don't know that. And so, and, well, no, we don't because well, he's just a suspect. He's just right. a suspect. Right, just a suspect. Go ahead. You heard the story. It was a head scratcher for you. I know it was a head scratcher for me the day I heard it. In fact, I posted on Instagram. This was a hoax back on July, uh, January 31st, excuse me. So I think the media, they didn't do their research because it fed a necessary appetite. They wanted to push the narrative. What research? They wanted to feed the narrative that no, Trump what supporters research? are walking around with nooses and hanging no, folks. No, what research? Excuse me? What research? No, I said it fits a narrative. What research no, no, no. You, you, said, no, no, you said the media did the research. What research? I would say that the press should have been skeptical to ask certain obvious questions that they weren't necessarily willing to ask. Well, here's the piece, though. Um, from he, the get-go. But here's the piece, though. We say ask questions. Correct. One, he only did two interviews with media. Right. Okay? Right. And the big interview was with Good Morning America. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's first. Second of all, Chicago Police Department <coughs> was not speaking of, as they were gathering evidence. Mm -hmm. You had right. individuals who were, okay, this source told, this sure. reporter, this reporter. Sure. And then there were things that were being leaked where the superintendent... But it would be to... insincere to sit here and say that CNN, MSNBC, there wasn't a litany of panels and articles and op-eds that were used to kind of justify and tout this narrative that Trump supporters and this error of Trump is kind of giving way to hate crimes. It would be insincere to say that didn't happen. But That's what, what the media wanted. But, but what they we... wanted the opportunity to write these op-eds. Well, first of all, what we do know... How do you know the media wanted that? They All they did was report. You had a complaining witness, a credible complaining witness, 98% of all crimes reported uh, are, are true, only two to six percent are found to be untrue. So why not go with that narrative? Because that's the only narrative that was out there. And if, I don't and, know whether and, they wanted and, it or not, but it was there. Quite frankly, there were no corroborating witnesses other than his own manager who could be charged with crimes every day that don't have corroborating witnesses. Yeah, Mon Monique, 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 but to, to, to Robert's point about in terms of what the media wanted, I am, uh, go to my iPad, please, Henry. I'm pulling up a Chicago Sun Times story that says rise in white supremacy hits 20 year high. Uh, and so it's not as if <laughs> you don't have, Monique, actual evidence to back up that you do have a rise right. in white supremacy in these attacks. Right, and it would be insincere for us to ignore that, just like it would be insincere to ignore whatever role the media plays in it. But there's two things going on. First, we have this believe the woman, believe the victim, Thing, right, that has been a part of our culture since the rise of Me Too, Time's Up. Well, well, actually, actually, go further. Susan yeah. Smith, the guy in the guy in Boston, uh, yeah. who said, I mean, so the reality is we've had other cases where folks have yeah. made up stories saying, oh, some black man shot me mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or pushed, me, pushed me in the water. We have a tendency in this society whether right. you're an actor, whether you want to the believe the person tells the story Emmett Till and beyond. until that's it unravels. That. Go ahead. That's, that's, you know, we, we can work Emmett Till backward and know that the black man did it. But this is different 
in that we are supposed to, the minute an alleged victim comes forward who has been victimized by crime, believe them. And there are scenarios where the victim does not come forward, alleged or otherwise, for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and it's a he said, she said, with not just no corroboration, but with no physical evidence. This is different from that. This is an alleged victim who came forward contemporaneously with injuries. He doesn't have to have broken bones to be injured. And there was a definite narrative with the place, with the time, within a short period of time and when the event supposedly happened. So there was no reason for there to not be reporting of that. But there was also no reason for the police to do their jobs, which is exactly what they did, which is supposed exactly. to happen. That's right when there's a report and then you figure it out. Listen, I know one of these defense attorneys, Roland Victor Henderson, is one of Jesse Smollett's attorneys. And he's not, as Scott would say, clueless about his client or unsure of what his client's going to say. He's a career defense attorney. He knows exactly what he's doing. And if he's not bringing his client in right now, there's a reason. To me, at the point that an investigation turns towards your client, you stand down. I'm not bringing my client in unless my client has to come in, and then it's going to be Miranda, and we talk if I advise my client to talk. Fine. I mean, that's just the way it goes We're, when the tide turns in this manner. Final, yeah, final, final, you're, final you're, comment, you're, you're go ahead. talking about when the tide turns. But Jesse and his, his fine defense attorney stopped talking to the police before he was a suspect, and my only point was that, one, that his defense attorney had to do an investigation, and regardless of what happens and whether what, what comes up in their own investigation, they certainly weren't letting him go in to confront those other allegations. That's a problem, but from a defense side, he's, the defense attorney is doing exactly what he should do. Uh, Robert, final comment. I think that it's obvious that the media wants and they needed a story like this. That's why they never questioned why, it. Why do we need a story like this? I mean, you can look at the, the comments made by the, by the president today. Obviously, the error. Oh, 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 wait, 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 hold on, money, money, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait,
in Richmond nearly 60 years ago. The student government president said that uh, Northam's present could overshadow the event. Northam tweeted that he would respect the wishes of the student body. Joining us right now uh, to talk about this here uh, is, of course, someone who knows politics there very well, Dr. Wes Bellamy, a city councilor from <laughs> Charlottesville, Virginia. Dr. Bellamy, glad to have you uh, back at Roller Martin Unfiltered. Thank you, good brother. Here's what, I, here's what is still very interesting here as you begin to study these dynamics. Uh, first and foremost, Northam says, I'm absolutely staying. I'm not going to focus on racial inequality uh, and things along those lines. <clears throat> One, highly cynical because you're only saying that because of the blackface clan controversy. Had this, was his, had this been his agenda before this came out, okay, it makes sense. And so it's really patronizing to say, oh, because of the blackface in the Klan photo, and he claims I'm not either one per I'm either person in there, and I don't know how these pictures got on my page. It's kind of patronizing to say, oh, now I'm going to focus for the rest of my term as governor on racial inequality. Indeed. And, and Brother Roland, I want to say uh, one thing first. We owe you a great deal of gratitude. Last week when I was on your show, uh, I'm actually a, a professor at Virginia University and I did your show in front of my students and they were asking me exactly what was going on, what were the demands from the Virginia Black Politicals. And after that, they had a town hall meeting discussing some of the things that they wanna see and they listed their information. And then subsequently you see the governor stating that he wasn't gonna come tomorrow. So a lot of that was spearheaded during our conversation last week. So kudos to you my brother. Appreciate it. Now, to answer your question, it is absolutely patronizing for the governor to say now that he's going to lead this discussion in regards to rec racial reconciliation and equity. But not only that, I'm just really appalled, and, and to be quite honest, I'm flabbergasted, and I'm not quite comprehending where these individuals are, who they're talking to when they're taking these polls, the Quinnipiac poll, the George Mason poll, because I'm speaking to black folk from across the Commonwealth every day, and it's consistent. People have been saying either Ralph needs to resign, which is our preference, and definitely he does not need to be the one leading the discussion and revolve, excuse me, revolving around race and equity. And then I'm also rather disturbed that when you see this poll and these polls come out, the, the underlying issue at hand, in my personal opinion, is that continuously we can see two individuals who have admitted to essentially copying Mr. Souls by putting blackface on they can remain in office and people are saying, oh yeah, they can say, but then the jury is still out on brother, Fair excuse me, Justin Fairfax, who has only allegations. And again, we need to take sexual assault very serious, but there has not <laughs> been any investigation done yet. He hasn't admitted to anything, but these polls like to suggest as if it's okay for the governor to do such, but we want to look at Justin in a negative light. So and here's, again, so here's, who are they talking to? So here's what also is still, and I've been asking this question on this show, um, and, and I would love to get either Dr. Tyson's attorney or uh, Watson's attorney on here. Uh -huh. You have a, a DA in Suffolk County in Boston mm -hmm. who says, hey, if a complaint is filed, I will investigate. Tyson's right. attorney says she's going to meet with the DA. Meredith Watson's attorney keeps saying that, no, we want an impeachment hearing. Well, I don't understand, and I would love to get your thoughts on how you're seeing this. An impeachment hearing is a political process. A criminal investigation is you lie to investigators, you mean, you're under oath. That's a legal deal. I don't understand, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, why the two women who are accusing him and their lawyers are pushing more for an impeachment hearing and not a criminal investigation. I have no idea. And just from my perspective, we've been very clear from uh, my stance and also talking about the Virginia Black Politicals. Uh, if an investigation needs, excuse me, not if, an investigation does need to take place because Justin has called for one. It appears that the individuals throughout the, excuse me, people throughout the Commonwealth would also like to see the process play out. 
I'm not going to get into why they're choosing one method over the other, but I would hope that an investigation takes place so that we can find out the truth one way or the other, because either if, if Mr. Fairfax committed these crimes, or excuse me, committed what he's been accused of, then he does need to resign. But if he is not, then his name needs to be cleared. All right. Congressman West Belly, I appreciate that. Can Thanks. I say, can I say yeah, one go ahead. thing? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Just, just listening to the to the young man who's on your show right before I came on, and for him to say, as a black man, that there were evil people on both sides, I just want you to know, brother, that I was there that day. I was the vice mayor at the time, still a city councilman. There were individuals, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, and so forth, who had AR-15s, who had machetes, who had swords, who had knives, who literally ran over a crowd of peaceful protesters and killed someone while the other side, quote unquote, who you are uh, talking about as your president has, people had signs. They were walking around literally just chanting. Now, I'm not going to say that, like, I don't, I don't understand how you could use that same term, specifically as a black man. These same folks who were there were walking around with signs with my name on it saying that West Bellamy is a nigger. These are the same people who said that they were going to hang me from a tree. These same people <coughs> send death threats to my house every week. There's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't get trolled by these same folks who are there. So for you to say, brother, there were good people on both sides, I want you to know personally to myself as well as my city, that is extremely offensive. And I hope you check that. Well, yeah. let, me re let me respond and let me help you understand, uh, and I'll, I'll explain my comment. There were people in Charlottesville who wanted to march in favor of free speech with American flags. There were also people that wanted to come out and protest Confederate statues. There were also people on both sides who were there literally to cause chaos and distension, and the kind of distension and chaos that you ultimately saw unfold towards the end of the event when, unfortunately, someone did pass away. Well, also so people, to sit here, excuse well, me. Well, there are also so people there. Hold on. I got to A. I got to A. Hold on. Let, hold on. Let, no, no, no. Hold on. Let, let Robert, Robert. Let me finish, finish but I need to add to finish. it. Were there also people who were there who were chanting against Jews? Yes, there were, tiki yes, torches? there were racists there as well. Okay, go right ahead. There were racists there. Like I said, there were people who wanted to support free speech, and there were also people there who wanted to protest the Confederate statues, and there were people, protesters on the left side, so to speak, who were there to cause detention and harm. As someone who's personally been assaulted violently at one of these protests... Hold up, in Charlottesville? Me, no, 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 we're discussing Charlottesville. Me, were you in Charlottesville? Me, excuse me. No, were you been, in Charlottesville? Is yes or no? Obviously, you know that I wasn't. Thank you. Obviously, go ahead. Now, go ahead. But I want to establish whether you were there or not. Who's been assaulted at one of these protests by the same kind of hyper-liberal people who were out there in Charlottesville, I know that there were indeed good and bad people on both sides. I'm sorry. Your rhetorical advice, advice is not going to scare me into saying that I'm somehow sorry for you feeling offended upon something that is just a reality. There were good and bad people on both sides. Counselor, go ahead. Saying that was not at all offensive or discriminatory in any way. Counselor, go ahead. Well, 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 well my question is, though, brother, you were not there. So how can you say that there were individuals, as you're describing this, the left side who were there to cause chaos? My brother, you weren't there. Are you going to deny I that, are there. Gonna deny that there weren't people on the side of protesters in favor of the left side who were there throwing cans, starting detention, causing fights? Like, there was chaos all around. No, I don't know why no, you can't just admit yes, it. Brother, I know it doesn't I fit so your here, narrative. Exactly. So, yes, I don't brother, have to be there to know that. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay. Literally, so we're going to talk on specifically, let's, let's start on Friday, August 11th, in which we were at a church service and we were surrounded by 500 white supremacists with torches who literally barricaded a group of people in the church before they subsequently went over to the University of Virginia and surrounded the statue of Thomas Jefferson. Fact. That was on, that was on the night of Friday, August 11th. On the morning of Saturday, August the 12th, we had a peaceful church sunrise service, myself and Dr. Cornell West and members of First Baptist Church on West Main Street. We marched from First Baptist Church to the African American Heritage Center, the Jefferson School. That was completely peaceful. There was no one there looking to fight. While we were walking, these white supremacists were gu with guns were on the other side of the street, taunting us, throwing things at us, and so forth. We then marched from the African American Heritage Center to McGuffey Park, which is adjacent to uh, Mac excuse me, um, Market Street Park, which is where everything transpired. And those individuals tried to surround us again with their AR-15s, their other guns, their weapons, and their signs. I was with about 100 different clergy members and members from the community. Nobody there at that time was looking to fight or do anything. This was all at about 10 a.m. And then when their rally was supposed to start at 11, when we were still in McGuffey Park, they began assaulting folks. 
that's how everything started. And I can tell you this unequivocally, brother, because I was there. So when you okay, say well, that people who were I also know people who were, who were there who were independent journalists who got pepper sprayed and attacked for no reason other than so, the fact that they were perceived as being in favor of the free speech mark or, or the Unite the Right rally. So it was so, violent. But you I may say it was completely off, kumbaya on your side. You're no, not going to get me to believe that. that. I know exactly what happened at those so, liberal protests. So, and I know how so violent brother, the far left is. So I'm not going to... Counselor, so, go brother, ahead. Counselor, go ahead. Brother, may I just give you a piece of fact? And I'm not here to debate something being super liberal or not. I'm talking okay. to you as another black man. Okay. And I want you to understand, brother, I call you brother because I love you, but I want you to know that. You said you saw uh, independent journalists and those of, those of that nature who were pepper sprayed. Let me assure you, my friend, there was no one who began fighting, no one from the quote-unquote left side or the clergy members or the folks who How were there. How can you even definitively say sir, that? Sir, I'm talking, please. May I finish? None of the fights occurred until shortly sure. after 11 a.m. when the white supremacists came into the crowd in which we were in and they began to throw things and then they started punching people in the street. Mm -hmm. I was there, I saw it with my own two eyes. That is when everything started. I know this because I was getting a police escort. Mm -hmm. That is how everything popped off. So mm -hmm. brother, I just want you to know, man, this is not like a left versus right. My brother, when you say there were good and bad people on both sides, brother, the, the people who were clergy members and walking with signs, aren't ones who had guns yeah, or who that's a, that's had an nooses in of their the hands and said that they wanted to kill me. Sure, and like, the people brother, this, with American flags were also good on, people. Everyone, everyone there says. wasn't a white supremacist, so don't, don't even try to push that narrative. But it was a hell of a lot of white supremacists who were there. Yeah, and, 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 and there were a hell of a lot of people who were white supremacists who were beating folks, uh, who have been prosecuted, mm -hmm. who have now gone to jail and prison mm -hmm. as a result of their actions on that day. Mm -hmm. And so those are undeniable facts. Good so and, people on both sides. Yeah, okay. But, but, all right. Gotcha. All right. Well, but it, but it, 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 it's, it's, it's real, uh, counselor. First of all, counselor, thanks a bunch, Scott. I want to get a, co a comment from Scott, then also bring Monique back into the conversation. I, I, Scott, go ahead. I just think you're in denial about this reality. The young woman that was run over by the white supremacist Heather Heyer. Heather, Heather uh, hi. What was she doing wrong? And the people around her, uh, because they absolutely. were quote they and were I, and protesting. I spoke to her mom, I spoke to her I, mom I don't before care about, about that. About political I'm saying violence. I'm saying that political violence. What were her and her people doing when the know. car ran over them? What were the young men doing uh, when the young black like men? Up. Hold on, hold on. And the, when they were getting beat by the white supremacists, oh, this is all on video. Okay. Or the white supremacists who took out a gun in the middle of the the march and stuff. And sure, people were yelling back and forth. He took out a 45 or whatever he took out and multiple started shooting at them, weapons. right? I saw so tell me the left. But who on the left? It's an open carry what state. group on the left? was Watch firing their weapons and, the and beating people. How are this, Robert? No, 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 Watch hold on, Scott, 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 I got it. Watch Robert, Robert, videos. how many, Robert, Robert, weapons, how many folks are the Robert? How many folks are the Robert? Robert, I got a question. Bad. It's real basic, it's real basic. Robert, 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 this is very basic. Robert, this is very basic. Robert, 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 no, Robert, you're not gonna tell me to hold on on my show. Robert, the question is this. How many people on the left will you say are bad? I wasn't there. How many people on the left will you say, Robert, Robert, how many people on the left will you say are bad? How many of them have been convicted and gone to prison? Good question. I know at least one, the person who assaulted me at a rally, because he's a violent... You weren't in Charlottesville! His name is Richard. No, no, you were not in Charlottesville. I'm asking you a question. Since you say there are bad people on both sides, I'm asking you, Robert, Robert, hold on. I'm going to ask you a question again. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you a question again. Okay. How many people who were bad on the left have been prosecuted and gone to jail as a result of violence on that day? Take your time. I don't know. It doesn't seem that the district attorney of Charlottesville really wants to pursue those cases. Monique Press, let me bring you in here. Narrative. Monique, let me bring you in here. Again, Monique, it's very interesting when I ask the question, because if you say there were bad people mm -hmm. who were causing problems on the left, mm -hmm. and you can't answer the question as to if any of them were prosecuted and have gone to jail, uh, and, and then when you say there was video, <laughs> guess what? That's called evidence. Monique, go right ahead before I go to my next door. Right, because we're trafficking right now in narratives and not in facts and not in evidence. Correct. And I would just invite She's talking about you, Robert. She's talking about you. <laughs> Go ahead, Monique. The lack of self-awareness is listening. Put forth some facts and some evidence to go 
with this both sides narrative, it's, I mean, I can just feel breath leaving my body trying to argue it, so I'm not going to. <laughs> what I will say is that there is plenty of evidence to show what the far right extremists, and that's the thing. I don't understand why people who are supposed to be mainstream conservatives, especially the black ones, feel the need to defend hate. That's yeah, not what the Republican Party is. That's not what <laughs> conservatives are. You don't have to be married to everything that criminals do in order to justify your positions on things like economics, health care, education. You can be a conservative and still call hate hate. And you don't need the hate to match up. Because when people do things that are wrong, like the first thing that should have been said to that councilman who was doing his best to reach out to you, Robert, was, I'm sorry that you were the target of hate. I am sorry that your peaceful event was interrupted. It pains me to know that you experienced that. You don't have to say, me too, me too, me too, me too. Okay, something happened to you at a separate time in a separate place. Something's happened to everybody. Yeah, it's I'm not relevant every at all day. I get it death threats every month. Right? My website goes down every week. Who okay. cares? That's part of doing business okay. in the role that we play. What I am saying to you is get a grip on what it means to be conservative or even be a supporter of this insane treasonous president and know that that is different than supporting criminal behavior, hate crimes, and murders. And you don't have to say that it's happening on both sides in order to stand against it. Free yourself from thinking you need to defend such things. I decry okay, all, violence. I decry all violence on the right and the left. I'm the only one so far who said violence on the right and left is bad. You guys seem to pretend it there doesn't exist no at all. Actually, 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 I'm that's telling a, you. Actually, that Robert, I I, I asked you a basic, I, just I asked you a very just tell me basic me. fundamental question. You said there's video evidence of people on the left who are committing violence. And I right. asked you how many of those people have been prosecuted and have gone to jail or prison and you don't have an answer. And it's That's, not the district attorney's point. fault. There's Put up violence a shot. on the left and the right. It's very you simple. It's very, hold on. If there is violence, the if there is violence, you prosecute those sure. who are committing violence. Yeah, so and what we all committee. and what we also know is that there were black people who, and let's just be clear, okay, in Charlottesville, they were not in a hurry to find those white supremacists. There were black people who were actually raising money and they were using social media to identify individuals. And so you would yeah. think. You would think that in Charlottesville, if they were happened. serious about that, they would have had, they would have convicted folks on the left and the right. But look, find the evidence and come back. But until then, don't try it. Folks, yesterday we told you about Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders announced his run for president. In the first 24 hours, he raised 5.9 million bucks from over 223,000 individuals. Now, he beat the previous 24 hour winner. California Senator Kamala Harris. She had a million five in her first 24 hours. Now, there's another number that might be a problem for a Senator Senators Harris, Booker, as well as other candidates. This is from an Economist YouGov poll from earlier this month. Net favorability is the difference between a candidate's favorable ratings and a candidate's unfavorable rating. You can see that Sanders has a higher net favorability than Harris or Booker, 31% to 24 to 23%. That's not a big gap between Sanders and the others, but if Sanders keeps making statements like this, it might be a problem. We have got to look at candidates, uh, you know, not by the color of their skin, not by, uh, uh, not by their sexual orientation or their gender, uh, and not by their age. I mean, I think we have got to try to move us toward a, a non-discriminatory society which looks at people based on their abilities, uh, based on what they stand for. See, first of all, when I talked about, I discussed discuss this on social media, and folks were saying that the question that was asked of him, uh, and so guys, if you could actually pull that, which is important, that the question dealt with his, that is a, well, we should have had the question, because that gives you the nuance. So the question apparently was asking about his age, and this was his response. But the reality, though, <laughs> Monique, is that Senator Sanders has been making these various comments about identity politics. Now, what's interesting with his statement, when he says, well, we've got to do this. First of all, there have been 45 presidents and one black, no females. The reality is, 
what he said is what folks have been doing. That you have seen, folks have been voting for folks based upon policies, based upon issues, and not based upon gender, not based upon race. And what you're dealing with here, I believe, is a candidate who still is bothered by the fact that he didn't get the nomination in 2016, that there were a lot of people who supported Hillary Clinton, uh, who did want to see uh, a female president. And here's the reality, Senator Bernie Sanders. It's been a lot of white men who have been presidents, senators, House members, Supreme Court justices. Uh, and so all of a sudden, when you get a splash of diversity, it's like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Really? <laughs> right, Roland. He's like a Brian McKnight song right now, you know, one last cry. Um, he, he is not going to fare well with black women. He is not going to fare well uh, with people who are moderate because he's far left of anything that would make sense for them. And frankly, he never speaks to the hate of the Bernie bros that are the real in impetus and push for his fundraising and for his support system. They are notorious for being disrespectful and hating black women. They're notorious for being Twitter thugs and internet thugs. And there's a support that has very little to do with them, but more so has to do with everything else they don't like. And anytime he's asked a question and he could have an opportunity to deal directly with race, with racism, with <laughs> racial issues, he does one of those love sees no color things. And frankly, it's just not going to work. I mean, even a novice at this point can understand that that's not an acceptable answer. Scott, this is very simple. Mm -hmm. This is how you answer the question. <clears throat> doesn't matter what my age is, doesn't matter how I look, I'm going to compete for every vote in the country. In the conversation. Mm -hmm. But he was sending a broader message there because what Monique said is true. They got a lot of other challenges and a lot of other, you know, limousine liberal type issues, as my mother used to say. But, but in regard to the race, Bernie Sanders is not going to be the only one in this progressive left space. Nope. There are going to be a lot of other people. And every political race, every election is different, whether it's local or federal. So you can't look back on four years ago or two years ago and think, okay, he's going to do better because uh, Hillary Clinton's not there. The reality is he raised a lot of money within a few hours or a, a few days. Uh, Kamala did the same thing because they either had the name recognition or the highest concentration of followers. It doesn't matter how you start. It matters how you end. And when these debates start, because 30 plus percent of the Democratic Party are black women and or black men, that's going to be split too. Someone out of those 15 to 20 candidates have got to figure out the, how to build a coalition of all of those interests, moderate and left, black, white, yellow and brown, and that's the person that's going to win. And you might only need 25 to 30 percent of, 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 the, of the piece to win. Robert, this is very simple. Bottom line is here, okay? So again, when you listen to Sanders, and this is not just in this interview interview he did with Esquire several months ago, other, what, things that he said for the last three years. And I have personally criticized him saying, dude, when you keep talking about, because he's always, identity politics. Well, the reality is, ident the phrase identity politics stems from the 1960s when African Americans were fighting for rights that we should not have had to fight for mm -hmm. and should have been granted simply being born. Mm -hmm. The problem is that's a poll tested phrase anytime there are people who have been oppressed who have been fighting for what they should be granted. African Americans, women, uh, Latinos, and so what you have here really, what is, and this is what Sanders has to understand, it's not what he might be implying, it's simply uh, what we are receiving or mm -hmm. inferring, and that is, um, hey, I'm a white guy, give me a shot. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Dude, it comes down to the issues. Look, it's some black folks who may not give black folks a shot. It comes down to issues. Well, what I think what Bernie is trying to say, and I actually at least respect him on this level, I think he is trying to, in the era of people like Kristen Gillibrand going to black churches and Kamala talking about how she smoked weed, the obvious pandering to the minority community, that doesn't have as much substance or material value in his mind um, to the policies that he wants to implement. Oh, are you saying Senator Gillibrand? shouldn't go to a black church? No, I'm saying it's 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 a little bit of pathetic pandering, and it's obviously, was it's it not necessarily reaching out. But, 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 hold on, what, 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 was it pandering? 
Was it pandering when Trump went to the black church in Detroit? Well, here's what Trump did, though. Trump actually increased and decreased black... No, 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 answer my question. Trump actually... No, 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 stop, 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 Robert, answer, Robert, answer, Robert, answer my question. If you say it's pandering... There's a difference between pandering Robert, 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 one second, Robert, one second. I'm answering your question. No, no, you didn't. If you say it's pandering for Senator Gillibrand to go to a black church... Yeah, because she's... Wasn't it pandering for Trump to go to a black church? Trump went to a black church when? After he already made the black... Black unemployment the lowest it's ever No, been. no, he didn't. No, Doing the he, same went, time. Robert, he went to Robert, the Robert, 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 I need you After to. He passed Robert, the no, Robert, he, he went to true. the okay. church, the black church in true. Detroit during the campaign. When he went to the church, it was doing okay. the campaign in Detroit. It wasn't, it was the president. And what did he do? He was pandering. And what did he do? He That's provided. He was pandering. No, pandering for black let me speak, votes. Let me speak for one moment. Okay. What did he do? He provided a material impact to the black. No, community. Robert. No, Robert. 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 You can't. We're gonna, Robert. We're going to act like Robert. 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 You can't. Robert. 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 Here's the problem. You're not even letting me speak. No, Robert. Here's the problem. Criminal justice reform. You can't. Robert. Robert. You can't. Who got it done? Robert. Robert. President Trump. You can't say that. You can't say that a Democratic candidate. Hold up. You can't say a Democratic candidate by going to a black church is pandering it is. because she's running, but then you can't, you don't want to say it was pandering when Trump went to a black church when he was running. Did he go to a black church in Detroit while campaigning? In any event, yes President or no? Trump has provided. <laughs> yes or no? Sure, Robert, yes sure. or no? Was President, that pandering? Sure. No, it's not pandering. Hold on. So wait a minute. How was it a pandering if he went to a black church? while running, but it's pandering for Gillibrand. Let me tell you how. Because President Trump actually provided a material benefit no! to the black community. No! This is a you, and which is, you don't, we don't want to talk about it every time, every time. Oh, my God. Every time I, 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 I don't understand. Every time I bring up black unemployment, every time I bring up criminal justice reform. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, okay, hold up. So, okay, so Robert, so Robert. So if Gillibrand, so let me help me out here. So if Gillibrand wins, which and they, uh, one second, if Gillibrand wins and then passes various things and sign them into law that will benefit black people, will you then say, oh, I'll I will, I, 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 hold up, pandering. hold up, hold up. Will you say then, oh, yes. let me pull back that it was pandering yes. because she delivered, dog, oh, come I'll on. I'll say I guess it wasn't pandering. She oh, my God, did. that's just beyond silly. That's beyond you silly. You, you don't want to acknowledge the fact that what Bernie Sanders is really talking about, he's talking about how Kamala Harris, who, by the way, is not even a foundation of black American, Cory Booker. What the hell is that? What is what the is, foundation of black? What, what the, the hell is that? A descendant of a slave in America, a foundation oh, of black God. American. The kind of people who are getting skirted to the side by Democrats. <laughs> and do, you know how, do you know how idiotic Democrats. that is? Sure, you may say it sounded idiotic who, to me. Who's, who, not what your who's 92nd birthday is it today? Hold up. Who's 92nd birthday is it today? 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 Who's 92
uh, beginning of the year in terms of focusing on the health. And of course, you know, for me, it's all about my golf season and of course, improving core. And so many of us uh, out here uh, want to uh, lose weight, feel better, get more energy. And one of the ways you can do that is with the D Herbs Full Body Cleanse. Now, uh, I always love the way it look and feel after it's over, but it's not just when it is over. It's also about how you continue uh, on changing eating habits, drinking more water, and drinking healthy, eating healthy, healthier foods as well. And look, many of us abuse our bodies based upon what we eat, especially when it comes to weekend, excessive eating, and processed foods, and all that good stuff. So the full body cleanse is about actually de uh, to getting rid of those toxic buildup in your body that drag you down. So if you want to try the D Herbs Cleanse, go to dherbs.com, dherbs.com, and use the promo code ROLAND for a discount at checkout. Now, in addition on the website, you can call 1-866-4-D-HERBS, 1-866-4-D-HERBS, and again, use the promo code ROLAND, okay? That's what you can do. And so, uh, D Herbs, uh, Full Body Cleanse, we appreciate them being one of the partners, Roll Martin Unfiltered. So go to dherbs.com and use the promo code ROLAND. All right, folks, uh, yesterday, uh, President Barack Obama was in the Bay Area uh, for his MBK initiative. Stephanie Curry and others were there as well. Now, you might remember, My Brother's Keeper was started by President Barack Obama after uh, the uh, murder of Trayvon Martin. And it's focused on mentoring uh, young boys of color. Now, of course, they had their first national convening in Oakland this week. And uh, last night, here's some of the conversation where President Obama and Steph Curry took some questions on stage. Uh, a lot of young men in this society, particularly young men of color, have difficulty finding the space and the resources and support to deal with their issues. And they've got issues. We've got issues. Uh, a good example just in my own household. Uh, when me and my boys get together, we'll watch a game or we'll play a game. And sometimes we'll sit there for an hour and we won't say nothing, <laughs> but we're watching the game. And then we'll go play a game. And afterwards, Michelle will ask, well, you know, like, how's Steph doing? Uh, you know, uh, I heard, you know, uh, you know, he, you know, had this issue, and I was like, "Oh, really? I, I didn't know, because we're, <laughs> we're watching the game, you know." Well, you were you were with him all day. What? No, yeah, I, I didn't know. We didn't talk about that, <laughs> right? Michelle, she will get with her girlfriends, and and they'll show up at noon. And they'll be sitting there and they're talking. I'll leave. Come back three hours later. They are still talking. All right, folks. Uh, you can actually go online. You can see uh, more <coughs> of the conversation there. All right. Now, y'all know we've been dealing with crazy-ass white people and just, just unbelievable just craziness that keeps happening. And so let, 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 I, I got to deal, deal with this. <laughs> roll, this roll this thing. I, this, this is just nuts. No charcoal girls are allowed. I'm white. I got you, huh? Um, illegally selling water with our permit on my property. Whoa! Hey! Hey, no. Give me the right. We don't live here. I'm uncomfortable. All right, y'all, this white lady tried to stop y'all, a one year old baby and her parents, from doing a photo shoot in a park in Houston. Look at her crazy ass. Come on, press play. Press play. Do, 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 do. But we own this story. So I'm going to, why am I, why am I going to go to the next story if I've already teed this one up to come back to the video? Anyway, Kellen and Isaiah Allen hired a photographer to take pictures of their daughter, Anja, to celebrate her first birthday. And a white woman, Francie Neely, was apparently so upset about their setup in the middle of the sidewalk, she pulled over her car and began to berate them. Now, Neely is a well-known socialite in the community and the ex-wife of the owner of the Houston Astros. That's probably why her ass an ex. Now, she later apologized for her actions. Monique, I keep trying to... T I'm telling you, I don't know what's up with these crazy-ass white women. I mean, sidewalks, the, the barbecuing... I mean, it's, it's like, 
How about just driving, mind your own damn business? <laughs> My heart was irreparably broken uh, two years ago, election night. And as far as I'm concerned, nothing has been done thus far to redeem them. I'm not really sure what the scenario is for my Caucasian sisters where they feel like it's their mission in life or their right to correct people who are barbecuing, who are selling cookies in front of a store, who are now taking pictures. And there's an emboldened nature due to this Trump atmosphere, this atmosphere of hate where hate is great. Um, and that's the only thing that's being made great again in this country right now. And i personally feel like uh, some of the laws that have been inflicted upon people of color need to be inflicted upon white women until they understand that harassment is a crime, that people who are of color can feel like they are assaulted, they can be in imminent right, fear of harm. Right. Scott, back me up on this. We so, maybe need to start pressing some charges so that we can get things back under control. Now, Rob, I know you're talking about good people on both sides, but <laughs> any of these crazy white women good? Do you think I'm going to defend any of these crazy I don't know, women? hell. I mean, yeah. you know, you I'm just saying, if they, got a, if they got a MAGA hat on, you probably would, but come on. <laughs> Look, I'm not defending any of this craziness. I think it is very, very important to just note that, you know, to describe these things as indicative of a Trump nature or a Trump country is just insincere. There's crazy people all over the country. But, 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 but Robert, this is... But, but, different kinds of races. We, we've been Florida, seeing... What we've really been Florida. seeing is... I mean, it ain't like we saw a lot of this crazy that this level. I um, mean, I it, would, it's kind of new. I wouldn't disagree. I would say that now we have a media who hasn't, we have a society that has an appetite to hear these kinds of stories. And we would be lying no, to ourselves. No, we got these. Trust me, when, when I see stories like this, <laughs> I'm clicking on them. We got these. Interesting. However, I don't think that's necessarily indicative of any sort of large cultural shift but that, taking place. But, but here's the deal, though. But Scott, that's over, worse. But here's the deal, Scott. It ain't it like we got a lot of videos mm -hmm. of black folks rolling up on white folks like, hey, move your stroller. I mean, th this is so nuts. Serious. But 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 listen to what my Republican <laughs> colleague said. He said, "I don't think it's an influx or or, or more. I, the, we have this appetite for this. That's even worse because now what, what you're suggesting is that uh, this has been going on at this level. It just hasn't been reported, or we don't have the video of it. And now we got the video. Now we're educated on it. That's even worse. The reality: where does where does this white privilege?" ownership, our land, our ground, our blood. It's consistent with these these white racist nationalists who they chant that. And then when I see one of these incidents, what I see is ownership by white men or white women uh, trying to enforce some law that doesn't exist. But here's my deal. Black you in your damn car. It's right. the sidewalk. Keep your ass moving. Yeah, but, but watch I, the psychology. I I, watch the psychology that they feel it's a incumbent upon them as a citizen to approach, enforce, protect, or, 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 or deny by calling the police or by getting into a verbal altercation on something that is completely none of their business. But they make it their business because of their white privilege. Now, I, 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 I just, I, is, I'm just like... It's troublesome. Yeah. It, it's, 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 it's almost criminal. Do you know how much stuff I see I keep driving? Damn it, I'm not pulling over because somebody on the damn sidewalk taking a damn photo. Right. I'm what? not. Oh, what if that's that's like, look, look, I'm in, I'm in Texas in blue bonnet season, mm -hmm. and so people, what they do is, because they, they, they got blue bonnet all the side of the freeway and stuff. Mm -hmm. You ain't like, I'm going, uh, damn it, y'all get the hell up, y'all laying on the flowers because you're messing the flowers <laughs> up. Damn it, I got somewhere to go. Yeah, don't you I, 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 do? I, I can't. And I'm barbecuing with my family or my daughter selling lemonade in front of an apartment so, complex. So just so we clear, Why Robert, right you think these some crazy ass white women too. <laughs> I do, and all I can say is this, I do know some whites they don't act like that. They don't all act like that. Oh, so, my God. He has white friends. I know some white Oh, and, hell. And, oh, and, hell. And, and, and you know good and, and bad white people on both sides, don't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Scott, <laughs> all right, Scott, I know you got to go. I know you got to go, Scott. Get out of here. This is going to be my final story, y'all, I got to deal with here. Okay, so two black teenagers from Dickinson, Texas, near Galveston, were at an off-campus basketball game when school officials thought they smelled weed on the boys. Y'all, they were sent to the Disciplinary Alternative Education Program. Turns out, they had no weed. The parents had them drug tested. Negative again. Joining us right now 
the board's mother, uh, Nakisha Owens, and Kimberly Yancey, president of the Dickinson Bay Area NAACP, who brought the story to our attention. Uh, this is just, I, I, look, I, look I, I, I sympathize with you because when I was in junior high school, I had a teacher who had a, had a security guard pull me and another kid in a room uh, because our eyes were red. And he was like, I think you were high. It was just, it was stupid as all get out. Uh, but, uh, uh, Nakisha, what did they say to you uh, to rectify that th this happened? Or did they say, oh, my bad, sorry? They haven't said anything as of right now. Um, they upheld what the principal is saying, and they he's adamant that my son smelled like marijuana. <laughs> okay, so he still says that's the case. Yeah. Right. Kimberly, how did y'all get involved in this? They contacted us because we were very concerned. And this is uh, with Clear Creek High School and the Clear Creek ISD uh, School District, which is one of the largest in Texas. They contacted us because uh, the allegations are that they were under the influence. They did not have weed found on them. Their parents got, the, they were drug tested. They brought all of that evidence rolling to the, the appeal process and the school district still upheld it. Now we're on the level three where we're meeting with an assistant superintendent for another hearing. And if that was upheld, then we go to the school board. But it's very, it's outrageous. That, that what we're seeing is the over-policing of black boys at the Clear Creek High School, which is predominantly Caucasian, and there's only 11% uh, population of African Americans. Nope. Today, he still has to report to DAP as we wow. wait for a decision. He's been there now. This is day 13. His last day will be March 21st, and we have to go through all of these appellate processes. What we're asking, what type of remedy will he have after this appellate process is finished. This is ludicrous, but it's happening every day in Texas. So, Joseph, take me through this. I mean, you, you had to experience this. Here, here we are. You've been going through this for down two weeks, and you didn't have weed. I mean, so, so how do you feel? The whole situation is depressing, really. Like, if I didn't have weed on me, nor did the other students... Why do we still have to go through all this? Like, why do we get disciplined and all of it? Can you? And and who who stopped y'all? Was were the police officers? Was security guards? And what was the interaction like? Nobody stopped us. Like we bought we bought a ticket, walked inside the game. The principal from our school approached us, and like as he was approaching us, we were stepping back from him. And he kept walking closer towards us and kept saying we smell like weed. So he was just searching for a principal. I mean, for searching for an officer to come on the searches. And you and so is your reaction, dude? What are you talking about? We're we were not smoking weed. And what did they do? Take you away? Detain you on the spot? They detained us on the spot in front of everybody, and then they brought us into a janitor room and searched, and searched us, and they didn't find anything. And then they did a sobriety test on us. Now, he had to, hold on one second. He had to stand on, on did, 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 one did, leg. So, so one second. Did they, did they ask you? Did they tell you to do one, or did they offer, or or did they offer you the opportunity to decline? Did they force you to do it? They forced us to do it. Uh, Nakisha, I, I I would assume you plan on some legal action against the school district. I, as of right now, yes. Because that I means I'm very concerned as to why they didn't call his parents that night when it happened. I wasn't called until like 9:30 that night, and that's when the principal told me what happened. And I was like, "Well, let me give you a call right back." Because I just finished talking to my son, and he told me, "Well, I'm off duty. You can we'll call you on Monday." Wow. Wow. Well, yeah, um, this certainly uh, is an unbelievable story, and and it speaks to the issues that. Uh, young black men have with, when it, again uh, the whole pr uh, school to prison pipeline, and so it's unfortunate this happened. Certainly keep us abreast uh, of this case and where it goes. <coughs> okay. Thank you so much, Roland, and we'll let you know what's happening. <coughs> we need your prayers right. and we need your help.
so we can make sure that there are two boys that are going through this right now. We want to make sure that this policy stops. We did talk to the superintendent of schools on Monday. So we've done our due diligence. Uh, we've contacted media outlets as well to let people know that in Lick City, Texas, and in Dixon Bay Area, in NAACP, we will not stand for this, All the right. old policing of our students. All right, we truly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All right, uh, real quick, Robert, your comment, then I'm going to go to Monique, and then we'll close it out. Maybe he smoked it all. I don't know. No, but honestly, um, here's the thing. The Houston Independent School okay. District. The Houston Independent. That was a joke. <laughs> yes, it was. All right, because you about to get cussed out on social media. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. You might want to clarify that it's real already, quick. It's already going to happen. But um, here's what I will say. The Houston Independent School Districts have been. No, 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 this is not Houston. This is Dickinson. Right. This Dickinson. is the Dickinson School District. Houston is, this is, this is closer to Galveston. Dickinson right, this is, is in south of Houston. This is, this is in Galveston. Well, they, they also have been targeted by <coughs> Texas Governor Greg Abbott. He has pretty specifically said that these school districts should reach out to any independent organizations to help them increase their effectiveness because the school districts are just dilapidated and they're overall there's mo multiple issues that need to be curtailed no, what, not, is, what is that not, first just, of all, not just in school suspension but so, what does that have to do with because I think the this. Fact, because I think that this is another demonstration that the independent school districts right there in Houston and Galveston has pretty much lost all competence and legitimacy and they need to be taken over by the state or they need to go ahead and concede to Governor Abbott and allow the outside okay, well, organizations first, well, first to all, come in and, and clean yeah. that up. Well, first what do you mean that's nuts? No, this, one, one, it is nuts. Look, certain, look at what the superintendent is no, doing. No, 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 no. One, this is an incident here. Two, Monique, you are a product of the Galvin School District. I'm a product of the Houston Independent School District. Uh, the Texas Education Association, uh, they have a very clear process as to if they take over a school district uh, that has not been met. And so one incident does not uh, necessarily... This is uh, the first incident. This has been discussed no, 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 discussed this is not, since no, no, January. No, but a school takeover is not based upon an incident like this. A school right. takeover in Texas is based upon not meeting educational requirements. Monique. Right, and sometimes what people do is what... I don't want to see happen here. We ignore the trauma and tragedy that that area has faced due to back-to-back -back hurricanes, floods, and devastation. And sometimes what Republican governors want to do in the state of Texas is instead of infusing the amount of money that would be necessary, not just into the educational system, but into rebuilding of houses, into rebuilding of hospitals, everything that made for a structure where people could live with families and return because there was so much flight to Houston and beyond after the last big hurricane. So then what happens is you get a system that's stretched where you have too few teachers, you have too few assistants, you don't have the support that you need and the community doesn't have what it needs. So that's the first thing that should happen. And then the second thing that should happen, and Nick is going to get mad at me for this, but I'm doing it anyway. This family needs to call Nick Pittman in Dallas because he is an excellent attorney right there in Texas who will know how to, if not represent them, get them to people that they need. Because even when a minor is on school property or at a school function, they cannot be illegally stopped or searched or detained or frisked, and that is all what happened here, and it should not be. They better get the money, and they better fight to change the policy. So what you so what you say as an attorney? You sitting there going? Yes, yes. <laughs> but, but again, as I always say, Roland, money for one case yep. doesn't fix it. There are policies that have to change. Can you hit somebody in the pocket? You know, you hit a county, you hit a school system in the pocket, but who really pays for that? And, and, that, and, and that's the thing, and this is the thing, Robert, where, and I've been saying this on police brutality cases and all this, where are all of the anti-tax people? Where are the Grover Norquist of the world? Where are the people who are always are saying, don't raise our taxes, when school districts, cities, counties are paying out billions of dollars in settlements because of actions like this, that's where I need, look, I don't care what your motive, but that's where I need conservatives to stand up for folks like this kid to say, y'all about to cost us, yeah. you know, a million bucks because you, of a stupid action and you did things that you should not have been doing and that was a process. But unfortunately, you don't you don't hear them 
standing next to the NAACP or others on cases like this. And to me, that's nuts. And I've said it to many conservatives saying, yo, where are you? Yeah, I think that's an interesting point. I mean, I think the Grover Norquist's of the world, perhaps if there wasn't so many abominations happening with tax policy, he could devote a little bit of time to something like this. They devote no time. However, I do think conservatives do take the perspective that if you want things like this to be ameliorated, you need to potentially look into charter schools and the privatization no, of schools. No, because public no, schools no, are proven no, to be just No, sorry, enough. Robert. Robert, Robert, here's why it's not going to fly. You know what's not going to fly? What? Because you looking at the creative school choice is the black choice. And the fun, one of the issues that I'm dealing with as a supporter of charter schools uh -huh. is the high suspension rate in charter schools. So your answer to this is not charters when charters, are, especially many of these white-run charters, have significant suspension rates of black and brown kids. So that is not the answer. I know personally, my little sister goes to a charter school. She wouldn't have survived in the Sorry, public bro. school environment that I did. But Robert, so I think you have to look at it on individual cases. Robert, no, 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 Robert. Hasty generalization Robert. here to just say that charter no. schools are suspending black kids. No, so. Ro Ro Robert, Robert. Okay. Let me say it again. Okay. Friday, Ray Charles Theater, Morehouse College. I am doing a town hall. Part of my tour, school choice is the black choice. Right. I've been, I've been advocating the school choice before a bunch of these people even knew about charter schools. I went to magnet schools in, in elementary school, middle school, Good. high school. Good. So your answer doesn't apply or work because the answer is not charters when charter schools are doing these same things. That's not the answer. The answer is to have principals properly following policy, not, not first of all, saying, yeah. I smell weed, forcing them to do a sobriety test, not calling parents. And what I'm saying is, if conservatives on one of these issues, I need conservatives, especially white conservatives, saying the actions of the principals are wrong and they're costing taxpayers money. The same reason why I would love to have the same folks stand up against police brutality, because if you are a believer in wasting taxpayer dollars, you should be offended with Chicago and New York City right. spending half a billion dollars on police settlements. And that's what I'm saying where people can come to, come to agreement. If your motive is money and over here your motive is justice, that's fine. The problem here is that these type of actions are costing taxpayers money when basic fundamental understanding of rules and procedures could have said how you handle this. But the fact that this black kid Right. It's now in his alternative I, program now, going on two weeks, and now treated like a criminal? That's bullshit. I agree. I don't think we're disagreeing. The only thing we're disagreeing on is that I disagree. Hold on, Monique. You're going to get a final comment, Monique. I don't think we're disagreeing. I think we're only disagreeing on whether or not public school systems and administrators have proven to be credible and competent in order to make reasonable decisions and but follow first of all, a lot, regulations. A, a lot of them have, but I'm, but, I'm also, but I'm also trying to explain yeah. to you, Robert, yeah. as somebody who is a supporter of charters, Good. there's a I'm fundamental glad. problem in the charter movement across the country. And that's Across what I'm not the so country, sure about. I know, Robert, I know personally of charter schools. Robert, done Robert, things Robert, for the black Robert, 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 I need personally, you to, Robert, I, I need you to listen to me, Robert. I'm listening. I have You're sat, saying over no, Robert, Robert, Robert listen. Suspension. I have sat at the table at the National Charter School Conference Fantastic. with third of the top 30 leaders, okay. and we have discussed and the highest in Arizona, speed, and that, we high, that issue in our state. You have the highest. There's a high suspension rate. Not in Arizona. In you, that's one state, dude. Okay, so there are so, so, 49 so, others. So and what I'm saying is, don't states. don't act like it doesn't exist. It exists. And as somebody who is a believer, I'm trying to for, deal with those charters saying, okay. hey, y'all need to cut out this high suspension rate and deal with if the that's problem. I would agree. I'm, no, it's not if it's happening. It is happening. Okay. Feel free I know to... it's happening in my state where I'm no, working with charter happening. school organizations and Bro, those charter schools happening. are not doing that. It's happening. You okay. know what? Feel free to watch the show on Friday. Okay. We'll be going to deal with it. Okay. And then on Monday, when I broadcast from the people, the, uh, the charter school supporters, uh, the school leaders of color who will be in Washington, D.C. on Monday, it's a problem. Monique, final comment. Right. I just wanted to point out uh, back to the core of this particular story, black and brown young men are still disproportionately targeted for suspicion of crime, for stopping, for searching. And where it's a case like this, where the administrator suspects that they smell like weed, I'm gonna take Robert up on his joke. I don't care if they did smoke it all. At the point that they didn't find anything on them, that should be the end of this 
case. There shouldn't be a situation where they're separated from their curriculum. There definitely shouldn't be a situation where they end up with some kind of juvenile tracking in court or a case like that, especially not for a substance that is now legal all throughout this country when we've got black and brown men serving jail sentences and we've got rich white people making money off of the exact same substance and the oils and the pills and the brownies and the cookies. I don't want to hear about any brown or black boy ending up not being able to go to school because somebody thinks they smoke some weed. To me, that's a step way too far. All right, folks, if you're in Atlanta on Friday uh, from 530 to 830, we're going to be at the Ray Charles Pull the Graphic Up, please, at the Ray Charles um, center there on Morehouse campus. And so we're going to have also, uh, we'll have, um, we'll have daycare for folks as well. Uh, and we're dealing with, now, first of all, they title it, is school choice the black choice with a question mark? It ain't a question mark for me. Uh, it is a choice. And, and the, the whole point of this conversation, uh, and let me be real clear, I'm not having a debate about charters or not. The reality is they're there. What my desire is very simple for black folks to run charter schools to run our own schools. Because part of the issue with this whole movement is that, that is frankly white run when the majority of kids in America right now are black and brown. We need to have more folks like Friendship Public Schools here in D.C., Steve Perry, Tim King, and others, people who are doing amazing things, Gestalt uh, in uh, Memphis, Charlene Reed uh, out of the Bronx as well. You're seeing amazing uh, folks, people of color, who are running schools, who are in control of those schools, and that's what we have to have. And so when we go to Atlanta, we're going to be talking about how do we cultivate African Americans becoming CMOs, charter management organizations. And so 5.30 to 8.30, the program is actually going to run 6.30. We're going to have a fair from 5.30 to 6.00. 8 to 8.30, uh, but the program is going to be 6 to 8. We're going to stream that live right here on Roller Martin Unfiltered on Friday, and so we look forward to that. Also, folks, if you want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered, please go to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. We want you to be a member of our Bring the Funk fan club. Your dollars go to make this show possible. This is about being independent. It's, it's not run by advertisers, by corporate folks or whatever. This is about us having conversations and dialogues that you are not going to have on MSNBC or CNN or even Fox or ABC or CBS or NBC. Uh, this is about us understanding and controlling our narrative. So please, we want you to go to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com to join our Bring the Funk fan club. All right, folks, I'm going to see you tomorrow from Atlanta. I got lots of media to do tomorrow. And again, so I have a show from Atlanta tomorrow. We'll broadcast uh, from the town hall on Friday. Uh, go to Eventbrite. Pull the graphic up, please, again. Go to Eventbrite to register. Uh, and so just go there, type in School Choices, the Black Choice uh, to register. It is free. All you got to do is register. I would love to see you there, Atlanta. And so uh, all my Alpha brothers, I expect to see y'all there as well. All right, folks, got to go. Holla! Mm -hmm. Roller Martin Unfiltered, the blackest show on all of digital cable and broadcast. And check out our audio podcast. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Press play. Martin. You want to check out Roller Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it. You want to support Roland Martin Unfiltered? 
be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.
Thank you.